So 20 years in SIGI, and I never imagined myself coming up to do a speech at the Leadership Conference with an introduction by Vanilla Ice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to talk to you today about collaboration. Um, I work at an agency, National Science Foundation, where we've done a really good job with this. Um, 20 years ago, when I joined the ID, approximately 20 years ago, lose track of time after a while, um, I thought to myself, coming out of the Army, hey, I'm going to join the IG. This is great. And the IG and the Army, <clears throat> they had a lot of power, and everybody listened to what they said. But I got here, and I found out that, hmm, not quite the same. Uh, sometimes the oddities didn't agree with our findings. A lot of times they didn't agree with our findings. And sometimes we found we didn't even agree with ourselves. This was really, really a problem. So 20 years later, I think things are starting to change. So imagine a world where the agency implements a recommendation even before you finish the audit work, or where the agency response says, thanks so much for your work. We really like your recommendations. We're going to do them. Or the exit conference is an open discussion where you can actually come to resolution and get them to move forward on your findings. Does this sound like a dream world, unattainable? How do you create such an environment? How many of you would like to work, by show of hands, would like to work in this kind of environment? Sorry, we're not hiring. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to hopefully give you some tools today to help you move towards that world. Today I'm going to tell you a story about an agency that's on that path. And even though we're a science agency, we're not getting there on an Elon Musk rocket. We're doing it by hard work. It's all about creating an environment of shared visions and outcomes, trust, and open communications. OK, let me be honest about this. I've only been at the agency about two years, so a lot of this work preceded me. A lot of people did a lot of effort and a lot of heavy lifting um, before my time. I just had to get people to come into the water. OK, well, maybe it wasn't always that easy. <laughs> um, it really started with self-reflection. The, back then, the folks took the time to sit down and think to themselves, what is it that we're doing or we're not doing that can make the OIG more effective? How can we work better with the agency? What can we change to better do our job as stewards of the taxpayers' money? It went like, uh, sorry, set up the story a little bit. NSF is a grant-making agency, as a lot of people in the room know. Um, the OIG's work, especially from the audit side, we focus some on the internal and a lot on the external, the grantees. On the grantee side, the agency is responsible for oversight and resolution of the findings. So our process kind of went like this. We'd go out, we'd do audit work, we'd write a report to the grantee, we'd talk with them, we'd get buy-in on the recommendations, and then we'd turn <clears throat> the resolution process and the oversight back over to the agency. The agency would take this resolution, our, our reports and our recommendations, and sometimes months later we'd finally get a resolution memo. And what happened at that point? There was no communication all the way along, and all of a sudden we had this resolution memo, and guess what? We vehemently dis disagreed with their solutions. Surprise? No, because there was no communication. What we had was frustration, distrust, anger, and it was not a productive environment. <laughs> there were threats, there was anger, there was bullying, there was failure to fix really identified issues, and there was no movement on fixing systemic problems in the agencies or with grantees. So from our perspective, both the IG and the agency were failing at their mission. We had an environment that created us versus them mentality, different expectations and different definitions of success. People went around the process, would jump right to the top and try, instead of trying to work through things. And we were fighting the same battles over and over again. And although the problem focused on the external audits, the attitude and the relationships permeated the agency. And I wasn't here at the time, but from what I heard, there was a lot of conflict and a lot of unproductive activity. And even though I'd been there many times before, being, having been in three IGs, and I'm sure many of you have been there, it's, it's not a fun environment to work in. So thank God at this point somebody figured out it wasn't working and decided to act. <clears throat> in coordination with, with the foundation, we formed what we call the Stewardship Collaboratives. That was almost a decade ago now to improve the audit resolution process and other working relationships within the agency. And there was, there was a realization at that time that we needed to present one face, one federal government, one stance with the grantees. The last thing you want is the grantees to hear two different positions, the OIG position and the NSF position, because they're very good at using that against you, and especially in a small community like NSF where there are a lot of universities who talk to each other. So what do we do? We set standards, communication, 
especially the face-to-face -face kind where things really get done. We set standards for collaboration. We recognize that bringing more people in to solve the problems and resolve the recommendations and bringing people from various offices together would help move us along. And we agreed to a basis of respect, balanced reporting, and our honoring bounds of our respective role. This was a two-way street. It wasn't just the OIG. We had to get buy-in from NSF as well as we had to open up to be open to the idea of working together. The hope was to increase flexibility in resolving our audit findings, advanced coordination of findings so no surprises we get early buy-in, and a joint focus on the improved program performance. Under that, directly with, with audits, we formed the Audit Resolution Working Group with members from both OIG and NSF. We described how we wanted to work together. We moved from commitments to agreements and ultimately to action. And we documented these agreements in writing. So we set some basic ground rules. Separate the issue from the, from the person. You know, don't make it personal. Solve issues at the lowest possible level. Don't escalate unless you really need to. And when you do have to escalate, make sure you're communicating and letting people know why are we moving this up and why we can't get agreement. NSF, in turn, agreed to more open access to OIG staff and to their systems. And OIG agreed to provide more data, more context to its findings, and help the agency better understand the problems. So what makes this all work? Well, we have monthly standing meetings to this day, and we discuss ongoing work between the OIG and NSF. Those meetings are chaired by myself, the AIGA, and the CFO. We have subgroups to work specific issues. And we make sure everybody understands the importance of what we're doing. So when we need an ad hoc meeting, we don't wait around until next month to get something done. We pull people in and do it right away. And very important, there was no defined hierarchy. People were given the opportunity to work with their peers, to work with us directly, without having to run everything back through their boss every time they needed to have a conversation. But what really made this work? First, it was buy-in at every level. On the agency side, it was the director, the deputy director, the CFO, all the way down to the lowest person working resolution. On the IG side, it was the IG, the AIGA, the staff auditors working on the job. That's what made this work well, was we had buy-in and people supported this idea. Second, selling the shared mission and outcomes. We're all in this together, we all want the same thing. At NSF, we want the grant dollars to go to research, we want to make sure that they're being used properly, and we want the taxpayers' dollars to be protected. NSF wants the same thing. Third, trust. When I was in sales, I was a broker for about eight years, and something I learned very quickly in that field was, nobody buys anything from you if they don't trust you. That same idea works in the federal government, works in every agency, works in the OIG. If your agency trusts, that you're going to help them be better at their jobs, they will buy into your recommendations and the change that you're trying to make. Third, fourth, the ability to agree to disagree. You don't have to win every battle, you just want to win the war. And lastly, maybe should be first, communication, communication, communication. Did I say communication? So how do we do this? Well, when we do audit work, we use notice of potential findings or recommendations. The agency is never surprised by a finding. We always have a discussion about it before we even get in there. No surprises. Credit for work that's well done. If we see something that's being done well at the agency, we let them know. We put it in our report. And we got support at every level, as I said a number of times. <clears throat> so, I know a lot of people in the room are going, well, you're the IG. How are you remaining independent and working so closely with the agency? One, <laughs> we never make management decisions. The ultimate course of action belongs to the program and the agency and management. We only care that what they decide to do truly addresses the issue. Secondly, we use the process. We take every step required by GAGAS, CIG standards, we issue draft reports, and even if the agency has resolved the recommendation before we um, issue the report, that, it, that recommendation is still included in the, uh, that finding is still included in the report. And when we can't find the resolution, we use the process. We use the resolution process through A50, and if the resolution official says, we don't agree with you and we think it's important enough, we continue our course of action through the National Science Board and through Congress if necessary to make our point. So where are we today? We continue to expand our efforts. Right now, we're in an effort to get the grantee community involved in this, 
in this collaborative relationship. We do outreach at community, community conferences. Uh, recently, we published an article in a community um, magazine, a joint article with NSF, des describing our complementary roles and how we work together and what they can expect to hear from the IG and what they can expect to hear from NSF. <clears throat> this has helped the, the grantees look at us differently in the way they view our work and made them receptive to our findings and recommendations. Not all of them. We've got to bring more along. <laughs> Ultimately, we're getting better outcomes. We're also learning and sharing in the OIG community. We work on groups with data analytics, grants best practices. We establish working groups within NSF OIG to work problems out. We even include our investigators, believe that or not. At NSF, the investigators and the auditors work together to solve these problems. And when we find something that works, this is really important, we share. We don't just share within the OIG, we share within the OIG community, and when it's gonna help the agency do their job better, we share it with them. In closing, what we've done is create an environment of shared visions and outcomes, trust, and open communication. So what we're doing is imagining and creating a world where the agency implements its recommendations before you even finish the audit work, where the agency response is, we love your work, thanks for making the recommendations, and where exit conferences are a pleasant discussion that come to resolution. But I think there's somebody that can uh, sum this up a little better than me. Always with you, what cannot be done. Hear you nothing that I say. You must unlearn what you have learned. All right, I'll give it a try. No, try not. Do or do not. There is no try. Thank you.